the word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the first book of Kings. Let us reflect on the surprising and mysterious ways by which God comes to us. And this is part of faith. Faith that sees God even when God chooses to come to us in a way that is unexpected, that is not part of our preconceived notions of God. This is part of our faith in God, openness to God's surprising and mysterious ways. Elijah is the central figure of the first reading. Elijah, the great prophet, had his share of suffering. Proclaiming God's word, some people, especially the Queen Jezebel, were not happy. They could not reconcile the message of Elijah with the word of God. They could not see God coming to them through Elijah. And so they plotted against him. What? What would Elijah do? I think he did something which every human being would uh, think of doing. He tried to escape, probably with a lot of regret. He was running away from danger, but he was also running away from a mission. He was running away from God. He probably could not also see how God could deal with him this way. Jezebel, not able to see God coming to her through Elijah. Elijah, probably questioning, is this how God comes to my life now in the form of suffering and danger? So he escapes. He goes to the holy mountain Horeb or Sinai. He hides in a cave. Remember Sinai, the holy mountain so used to God's revelation, so used to what we call theophanies, the revelation of God. Elijah in the cave received an order from God. Watch out. I will pass by. I will reveal myself to you. Now, first came a strong and heavy wind. Now, if I were Elijah, I would say, Oh, here, God is here. For on the mountain of Sinai, you know, God usually or in the past would come in the form of, yeah, uh, of wind and, uh, and uh, rain so that rocks would fall. But God was not in the wind. Then came an earthquake. Again, Mount Sinai is used to having the revelation of God in the form of an earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. Then came fire. Again, another manifestation of God. But God was not in the fire. Afterwards, a tiny whispering sound came. And Elijah realized this is how God comes to him now. In a different way, a tiny whispering sound that could be detected in the heart only by someone who is sensitive, who is focused on seeing God, on hearing God. Elijah is truly graced. He is there. He is discerning. He is a man of faith. He does not contain God within his notions or concepts of God. While he was formed by some of those preconceptions, faith dictates on him to be open. And so, when God finally comes to him in a new manner, Elijah was able to detect. And with humility and an action of worship, he welcomed God. This is a call to us. Faith includes not only belief in God, but the readiness 
to welcome God, whatever He might use to come to us. Our second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We have been reflecting on the mysterious and surprising ways by which God comes to us. And this is, in a way, a test of faith. Can we still believe in God who now somehow looks like foreign to our ideas of God? In the first reading, Elijah experienced that. He first experienced the horror of being a missioner of God. And uh, when he was hiding in a cave on the mountain, the sacred mountain Horeb, God came in a way that was unexpected. Elijah could have easily welcomed God if he had come in the form of winds, earthquakes, and fire. But God chose to come in the form of a tiny whisper. But Elijah is blessed, truly blessed with faith. The faith that enabled him to hear and see God coming in a new way. In the second reading, we have the experience of St. Paul. And I guess St. Paul had to grapple also in faith with this surprising action of God. St. Paul as a former Pharisee, as a zealous promoter, evangelizer of the Jewish faith, he now, in a way, laments. He experiences deep pain over the reaction of Israel to Jesus. The reaction, which is rejection. Imagine, the holy people of God chosen by God, entrusted with so many beautiful things, especially the mission of welcoming to the world the Messiah. When the Messiah finally came, it is this people chosen by God that rejects Him. And St. Paul does not hide his pain, his bewilderment. Probably, St. Paul is asking God, God, where are you in all of this? Where is your hand here? Show yourself to us. How come it is your own people that begins to reject the one you have sent? And here are the Romans, some of them considered by your people Israel as Gentiles, as pagans. They're the ones now turning to Jesus. Where are you in all of this? Imagine if St. Paul were not a person of faith. He probably would just keep on complaining, complaining, and even bashing Israel. Close to bashing God. But look at the surprising faith of St. Paul before the surprising action of God. St. Paul rejoices, continues to rejoice at the blessings Israel has received from God. Instead of blaming Israel, St. Paul affirms that Israel has received from God truly, truly received from God, adoption, the glory, the covenants, the law-giving, the worship, the promises, from Israel came the patriarchs and also the Messiah in his human beginnings. So we find a surprising response of St. Paul. The pain did not lead him to bitterness and complaints. He still sees God's action in Israel. And then came another surprising response in faith to save Israel, St. Paul is willing to be separated from Christ. To experience this pain of separation from Christ, 
so that Israel would be close to Christ. Wow, we are filled with surprises. But dear brothers and sisters, here is the point of our reflection. God is working mysteriously through Israel. And God is working mysteriously through Israel's rejection of Jesus. For St. Paul, this is an occasion for God to open the doors to the Gentiles and for him to offer, like Christ, himself, his pain, his sorrow for the salvation of Israel. Our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from St. Matthew. We have been reflecting on the surprising and mysterious ways by which God comes to us, by which God reveals Himself to us. God cannot be limited by our concepts, by our expectations, and that is part of our faith. Are we open to be surprised by God? Can we still detect, see, and hear the presence of God to us? when God comes in a way that is unexpected. In the first reading, the figure of Elijah, probably confused that he is now being hunted down by the Queen Jezebel for doing something good. Is this how God treats his friends and prophets? He hides in the cave on Mount Horeb. God tells him to wait for him. He will pass by. But God was not in the traditional forms of His manifestations. He was not in the heavy winds. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. He came to Elijah in the form of a tiny whispering sound. Something new for Elijah. But this expresses the faith of Elijah. The faith that enables him to detect the presence of God, even when that presence is not what he had expected. Openness to be surprised by God. In the second reading, St. Paul oh, experienced another surprise from God. The people prepared by God to welcome the Messiah is the people that rejects the Messiah in Jesus. St. Paul, instead of complaining, blaming Israel, and blaming God, sees the action of God. First, he affirms the call of God to Israel is real, is genuine. Nothing is revoked by the rejection of Jesus. But St. Paul also sees maybe this rejection by Israel of the Messiah will be used by God for something else, for the entry of the Gentiles. And he himself, St. Paul, as a good member of the Jewish people, but now believing in the Messiah Jesus, gives us a surprising response. He is willing to be separated from Christ. He is willing to experience deep pain for the sake of the conversion of his people. Oh, what a surprising manifestation of faith on the part of St. Paul. In the Gospel, we are surprised again by some of the actuations of Jesus. He had just concluded this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish. He now asked his disciples to go to the other side of the lake to take the boat, but he would not join them. Hmm? He would not join them. Now we know the reason. He wanted to stay in this faraway place to pray. But look, hmm? As the story unfolds, we begin to be surprised. Why would Jesus allow his disciples 
to cross the lake without him. Without him. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm sure all of us have had some experience of crossing, crossing lakes, crossing some turbulent moments of our lives. And you look around, where is Jesus? Where is God? Why did He allow me to walk by myself? Why did He allow me to cross this dangerous terrain by myself. Quite surprising. Is Jesus giving here a message to his disciples about his physical presence? Is he already intimating that a time will come when you have to cross rivers, cross mountains, and I will not be with you physically. Is Jesus here preparing his disciples for that? Is Jesus telling them you should be ready for a different level of faith where you will not see me, you will not be able to touch me the way you are used to? I'm just asking. But this can be verified in our own experiences. You look around and you say, where are you, Jesus? Why do I feel alone? And then came the heavy winds that tossed the boat of the disciples. And they panicked. Imagine, they were supposed to go to the other side but because of the winds, they could not reach their destination. The winds were bringing them farther and farther away from their destination. And where is Jesus? He's there on the mountain praying. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm sure all of us have had such experiences too. You know where you want to go. And sometimes you can already see the shoreline. You can already see your destination. But then something happens. The equivalent of the strong winds. And you see the destination becoming blurred. And you feel you are not reaching it. You are getting further and further away from where you wanted to go. Isn't that frustrating? Isn't that a cause of panic and fear? And don't you, don't you in those moments cry out, Lord, where are you? Jesus, where are you? Why did you let us go by ourselves on this journey? What is the use of Jesus who is praying up there in the mountains when we are here on the seas being tossed by the winds? And a surprising, surprising way by which Jesus deals with his disciples. That's the first point. Then the second point. Jesus, at three o'clock in the morning, comes to his disciples, so he has seen them. For anyone who prays in communion with God sees the suffering of others. Oh, but how surprising! Jesus walks on the lake to come to the disciples. In Exodus, Moses parted the waters so that the people could walk on dry land. Here, Jesus walks on the water. And so the disciples thought it was a ghost. Jesus comes to us sometimes in a form that makes us more afraid. Is he a ghost? But his response, it is I. I am not a ghost. I am Jesus. Have no fear. 
And Peter tested Jesus. If you are Jesus, let me walk towards you. And Jesus said, yes, you can walk. But Peter got distracted. Instead of focusing on Jesus who looks like a ghost, he, his eyes turned to the winds. And without focusing on Jesus, he starts sinking. This is faith. Even if you don't recognize him, trust in him. Keep your eyes focused on him. Believe in this tiny whispering sound. It is I. And walk towards him. Walk straight to him. You can walk on waters. Thanks to the hand of Jesus, when Peter started sinking, the hand of Jesus was there. And he was saved. My dear brothers and sisters, we get confused. Sometimes Jesus looks absent, <laughs> he, he feels absent, or when He comes, we do not recognize Him. But have faith. When you hear His voice, believe it is He. Walk towards Him. It may be bumpy waters, but walk just the same with your eyes fixed on Him, and you will be saved. I celebrated my birthday last month. I decided not to prepare anything. Said, if some people send food, okay. I did not invite anyone. If people come, okay. Let us be open to God's surprises. And we were surprised. Even without uh, preparing a party, oh, so much food came. And even without uh, a, a formal invitation, people came, you know, uh, and, uh, and I'm very grateful, you know? family, friends, priests, religious, they came, you know, without being invited, and food really came. But what a surprise, what a surprise. A group of people working in a restaurant, some of them, with hearing deficiency, deaf, they came to greet me. Oh, and they had a, a good time, you know, enjoying uh, eating food that, uh, that uh, uh, is not served in their restaurant and eating food that probably they have never tasted in their lives even if they work in, host, in, a, in a restaurant. You know, and uh, I was so impressed when uh, especially one uh, deaf person by the name of JJ, oh, he just wanted to have photos with me, photos, no? And through an interpreter, he was showing how much he enjoyed being with a cardinal, a bishop, and being seated beside the bishop and eating. For him, it was probably an experience of God. But for me, it was my experience of God. On my celebration of life, God comes in the form of simple people and a deaf person. When they had left, another group came. Street people who are now working for the ecology ministry of the Archdiocese of Manila. They are recycling trash. And now, now they're earning something. Oh, they came and they were looking around. They said the first time they have set foot on a, in, a, in a, the bishop's house. And they ate to their fill. I could see how hungry they were. But they feasted. Oh, I enjoyed looking at them. No. And for me, that was God's presence coming to us to grace the occasion. What a birthday, what a birthday. God coming to us in surprising ways, consoling us. But you have to be there to see, to hear. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.